Hello, it's Xiao here. In today's custom app build video, we'll be creating a time of application that integrates with success factors as the system of record. Let's start off with first reviewing the end product. Right now, I want you to imagine that I'm logged in as Anya, an employee requesting for some time off this holiday season. Now we are in the manager's workspace to process the request. When the request was approved, the time of record was integrated and created in success factors. Let's have a look. Now that we have seen what the end product looks like, let's see how it was built. We actually used the time of template for this one and extended its functionality with the integration into success factors. The time of template already comes with a pre-built set of application files like the time of request table, a workspace, a portal, mobile applet, and some workflows. We're going to start by adding a new table to store the time types that are currently in success factors. I've been up this early in a long time. Started thinking, man. Either they don't know. Don't show. I don't care about what's going on in the hood. Use of success factors spoke requires an integration hub license. At this point, the connection and credentials have also been configured. So if you want to see how it was all set up, please refer to the ServiceNow documentation site. Turned on the TV this morning. 
At this point, we've successfully integrated with success vectors and retrieved the time of types. Since this is one of the parameters to be passed back into success vectors when we use the request time of action later, we can reference this in the default time of request table. The next workflow we will create is to actually create a time of request record in success vectors after a time of request record is approved. Let's have a look. Quick note, since our user IDs are the same across success vectors and this ServiceNow instance, we can use them both across the integration. Okay, so we have created a test record to test this flow. And since we are testing the workflow, we we'll actually bypass the trigger, which means we don't have to approve the record for it to work. Remember, we have the user ID, time of type, start date, and end date passed to success factors as part of this action. Going back to success factors, we see that this new time of request has already been created. Our default form in the portal also does not have the newly created time of type reference field, so we can add this in via form designer.
our main workflow is now complete. Let's now add a little more functionality into the portal where we can show the employee's time off balance from success factors directly on the homepage. We are creating a subflow here instead of a flow, as we can then append this to any new workflows that we built without having to rewrite this flow again. It's a great way to build and then reuse functionality across any application. For some clarity, we are looking at records for the user record and time of type record in ServiceNow as these are reference fields in the time of balance table that we just created. Now that we have pulled the balances for the user, let's make it visible in the portal by adding a new data visualization component via UI Builder. As we had set the data filter to dynamically show the balances by the logged in user, we'll have to impersonate Anya to show her vacation balances.
As a final touch, we'll add in the subflow in the main create time of request flow so that the user's time off balances are updated each time a new time of request has been processed. And that's how we create a time off application that integrates with success factors using App Engine Studio. No code, no problem.